Lack of access to credit and financial capital is often cited as a great hindrance to business establishment, growth and success on the African continent. In response to this challenge, the government in Nigeria has over the decades established a number of NDAs and financial institutions, among which is the Bank of Industry. On this episode, Talk TV engages with a state manager of the Bank of Industry so as to acquire a deep understanding of the do's and don'ts of success when one ventures to access credit interventions from the bank. Welcome, Mr. Paco Inzirabo, State Manager, Bank of Industry. I've been itching to know this Bank of Industry. How old is it now? A bank of Industry will be 60 this year. 60? 60 years, yes. You have been in business for 60 solid years. Wow. That means it's older than Nigeria. Yes. Uh, 1959, we started business at Icon Merchant Bank. Okay. Yeah, that was um, owned by the World Bank Group through the International Finance Corporation, IFC. Oh. No, not, I understand that now because mm. I was wondering how could the Nigerian government own anything when it didn't exist. <laughs> now you've clarified that for yeah. us. So tell us about the evolution over the years. Okay, I think in 1954, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was changed to the Nigeria Industrial Development Bank. Okay. NIDB. Okay. And that uh, lasted to 2001 when the Obasanjo administration decided to uh, reorganize and restructure uh, all the development finance uh, institutions in the country. Okay. So there were about three of them that uh, that administration put together. Um, NIDB, NIDB, then uh, NEFOND, NEFOND, and uh, NBCI, Nigerian Bank for Commerce and Industry. Oh. So all of them were put together to form a mega development finance institution called Bank of Industry in 2001. So there are three units within the superstructure called Bank of Industry now. Uh, let's say it's like a major an acquisition. Okay. Uh, they have integrated to become one uh, because uh, so they, three have, they have two parastatals have yes, been merged. Merged to form. But the interesting thing about um, NIDB, it was a private limited uh, company. Okay. Unlike the N. BCI and uh, the uh, NEFOND, okay. which were prostatas set up an act of parliament. So it was easier to actually transform NIDB to become the mother, to ride on the structure of NIDB okay. in order to bring that uh, major to fruition. To fruition. But yeah. I'd like to know from the inception, when it was owned by IFC in 1959, is it the same responsibility it carried today that it carried at that time? Yes, basically, um, it, uh, BOI, as it was in the NIDB days, yep. has remained a development finance institution. Uh, by that will mean that uh, uh, we look out to bridge where there are financial gap in the ecosystem, in the, in the industrial space. Okay. So it's a very good thing that you've been able to tell us about the uh, inception of BOI. But share with us, if you can, the evolution over the years. Yeah, um, Bank of Industry um, actually took off from its precursor uh, institution, NIDB, uh, which I mentioned earlier. And um, that happened in the year 2001. Okay. When the Obasajo uh, administration decided to come up with a mega development finance institution. Okay. So we, that saw the merger between uh, NIDB, um, Nigerian Bank for Commerce and Industry, which okay. is MBCI, then NEFOND. NEFOND. Uh, NEFOND is actually National Reconstruction and Economic Fund. Okay. Uh, and um, what's the responsibility of Bank of Industry? A bank of industry uh, specifically have statutory to, responsibility. Yes, we, we have to cardinal uh, mandate, so to okay. speak. Uh, we prefer business advisory services okay. uh, to MSMEs, to large enterprises, and we also provide long-term funding for 
for establishment of uh, manufacturing and processing uh, company for their expansion or for their diversification. So basically, establishment, expansion, expansion diversification. diversification. Yes, we also also uh, help to um, ailing companies. So when you talk of uh, rehabilitation, uh, rehabilitation, yes, some companies that are folded up. Um, if they need our services, we can that also are folded or are folding up. Are some that have completely have shot. Uh, so that's like resuscitation. Yes, resuscitation. Coming up. We do know that commercial banks have loan facilities for businesses. What's the difference between what commercial banks do by way of loan, disbursements, interventions, funding, investments for MSMEs and large-scale industries as it were, vis-a-vis -vis what the bank of industry does? So you, f you, BOI funds establishment, expansion, expansion uh, diversification, diversification, rehabilitation, rehabilitation, rehabilitation revitalization, and resuscitation yeah. of companies. Of I mean, companies, that's yes. like six in one. Yeah. So you fund a fresh yes, enterprise. Yes, we, we also support startups. You support fresh startups. Yes. You help them. You can come in at a stage where they want to expand their operations or sphere of coverage, or you can come in when they want to diversify. Very and cool. you also come in when ailing companies want to be revived or resuscitated, yeah. or when dead companies want to be resuscitated and uh, revived, as it were. Yeah, so That's a very tall one. Yeah, so we do that through our business advisory services and our long-term patient capital that we can inject into such uh, entities. How long term are we talking about here? Uh, depend on the intervention. We have several intervention funds. Okay. We have funds that have gone up to uh, 15 years. 15? Yeah, they are 15, 10. But most of the MSMEs that we deal with, basically they need um, loans in the range of three to five years. Okay. But you can do as long as 15 years. Yes. Or that about is 35 for, years. That is for special intervention fund. For example, we have the Power and Aviation Fund. Okay. When the, the central bank chose Bank of Industry to intervene in that setup okay. in 2010. So Bank of Industry managed that fund for the, the central bank. So we have the uh, restructuring. So the CBN will deposit the money. Yes. We have the restructuring and the refinancing fund and the PAF, the Power and Aviation Intervention Fund. Both of them was over 530 billion. And okay. that was specifically for those industries. To help MSMEs that had that were exposed to commercial bank, that is the refinancing, the restructuring and refinancing fund. Yeah. And also to help uh, companies that were interested in investing in power, in the power sector and okay. innovation industry. Wow. Yeah. So th those could go as long as 15 yeah, they years, could go as but not 35 years. years. No, no, not, not 35 What's the highest the Bank of Industry can do? Uh, because I'm interested in that patient loan yeah, thing that you talked about. To be honest with patient you, patient capital. if you get something within the range of three to five, that is patient enough. Mm, but considering the fact that the uh, gestation period of some businesses could... Mm would require up to seven, 10 years. Like the broadcast industry, the average mm -hmm. gestation period is between mm -hmm. seven to 10 years on the average. Uh, you see, it is not, you're not supposed to fund all your um, investment through debt. So sure. it, it has to be a mixture of equity and debt. Sure. Uh, so sure. when you have a, a correct blend, five years and the, uh, the, the, the truth is that when you have a relationship with Bank of Industry, it's like a marriage. Mm. Marriage is already renewed. Mm. You can start with us. We give you a loan of five years. In three years, you are coming back again. You have been doing well, and you want to get another fund. So is, so is, it's possible. is it open to renegotiation along the way? Uh, I wouldn't call it renegotiation. Okay. It is that all oh, there are other things that have come up because the business environment is very dynamic. Mm -hmm. You have seen other investments. It's constantly changing. Yes. Yeah, so you need more injection of fund. Where we look through your proposals and we think that it is 
the right decision you are making, we can inject more fund. So okay. we also help our customers with working capital. Okay. So we help so them. So maybe not renegotiated, yeah. but reviewed. Reviewed. We call it in banking terms, we call it restructuring. Restructuring. Uh, where you need to tinker with the tenor or you are tinkering with uh, the terms and condition of the initial loan. Okay. Yeah, it's possible. Okay. It's possible to know. Thanks that. for clarifying mm -hmm. that for us. I'm still interested in knowing what's the difference between what you offer by way of intervention and what the commercial banks offer? Uh, basically, the commercial banks, uh, uh, they render services like current account, yeah. uh, savings account for businesses and for individuals. True. And uh, they also serve as uh, <clears throat> financial mediators. Yeah. Uh, they, they intermediate in the financial system to ensure that where there is shortfall of fund, they are bridging it with, with where you have excess uh, mm -hmm. fund. So they are taking but from those that have... In terms of how it relates to businesses, because that's what this program is all about. Okay. We do know that commercial banks have loan facilities for businesses. Uh, all the times they call them. I don't want us to go too technical. Um, what's the difference between what commercial banks do by way of loan, disbursements, interventions, funding investments for MSMEs and large-scale industries, as it were, vis-a-vis -vis what the Bank of Industry does? Um, I would say there are a lot of similarity between what the Bank of Industry as a DFI is doing and what the commercial bank is doing. Okay. I think the area of difference will be in the, uh, the pricing of our loan and in terms of the tenor of the loan. Okay. Uh, for pricing, we offer, I would say, the lowest in the country as we speak. Uh, Bank of Industry traditional uh, interest rate is 10%. Mm. So 10% per annum, that gives you less than uh, 1% per month. Okay. Whereas commercial banks, uh, depending on the category of their customer, they can do between 18 to 30 uh, percent. Okay. And in terms of tenure, we can go as long as five years. Whereas traditionally they do short term okay. because of the kind of fund that they also manage. Yeah. They manage short term fund. Uh, it is your deposit and my deposit in the bank that they have to use to lend. Mm -hmm. So when they use short And investors can be a bit impatient. Yes, when you put money tomorrow, you can go back and you want to withdraw. So they are very careful in terms of the way they structure their loans. So uh, in layman terms, the duration of the loan, duration and the as price. well as the interest yes. payable on yes. the loan. Yes, but, uh, it, but uh, another angle to it is that uh, uh, Bank of Industry is more selective. Okay. Uh, we are a development finance institution. It therefore means that the our orientation is quite different. Okay. Uh, we are looking at what will ultimately be of benefit to the nation, the economy of the nation as a whole. So yeah. it's not just any business. It's not just any business. So because for the commercial banks, as long as you have strong collaterals, you have strong collaterals. Or the business can, is highly this promising. This can make money. You can fund. But okay. for Bank of Industry, we are looking at the economic analysis of this venture that you want to you want us to participate in. Uh, what do I mean by economic analysis? Mm. There are some business that can be financially viable, yeah. but not economically desirable. Wow. Yes, because you are making new. you are making money as an entity. You are making money. <clears throat> but you're actually, <clears throat> excuse me, okay. you're actually bleeding the, the economy. Wow. Yeah, you are either exporting our jobs to uh, other uh, countries mm -hmm. or you are depleting our foreign reserves. Wow. You, are export, you are importing things here. So Bank of Industry will look for investment that are utilizing our local resources. So that becomes a catch for us. We want so to so see it's from the context of economic health and well-being. Yes. So we look at it from all the stakeholders in that business. For example, if you set up a plant and we know that the environmental impact of your plant is going is, is negative, yeah. even if you are going to make money or you can pay our loan in less than one year, we will not finance it wow. because of the environmental impact. So for most of our loan, we normally encourage our customers to do a detailed environmental impact assessment, assessment report. We want to be sure that you have taken care of every stakeholder in business. 
So we have a different orientation to the kind of um, entrepreneurs that we support. In my own language, I call them love preneurs. Love preneurs. <clears throat> love preneurs. Because how do you mean? A business, they are not just their unusual kind of businessmen. A businessman have so many stakeholders. The first in is if you look at the <clears throat> the profit and loss account, yeah. you, you'll be able to dissect and know the category of uh, stakeholders in a business. The first line is the revenue line. Revenue the revenue line. line meaning that you are offering a value service to customers. Mm. Because if you don't offer value service to customers, they won't patronize you. True. So your first stakeholder is your customers. Then for you to offer that value service or product, you need raw materials. So True. that exposes another line. level of your stakeholders, your suppliers. That means as a business, while you are serving your customers, you are guaranteeing market for suppliers. And that keeps their own business healthy. That keeps their own business. So you are already healthy. seeing the impact one single business is making. Then come to the overhead, because if you have revenue, you have cost of goods sold, then you have gross profit, then the other is your overhead yeah. expenses. Yeah. So you are going to take care of your, your workers, you are taking care of your, of your, um, of, of your facility yeah. and all that. Your workers, maintenance. Yes, maintenance, all those are other stakeholders. Your and then the regulatory bodies are also the bodies being are nourished and nurtured yes. by your activities. Then you are going to be paying taxes. Um, let's say interest first. That means somebody must have put their money in your business. Mm. Uh, so so equity, your creditors are your stakeholders. True. Like us as a bank, that is where we come in. You must satisfy our interest. Then you have even um, the task you talk about tasks. Yeah, that tasks. is the government. Yeah. You are taking care of government. So you can see from one. You are taking care of the society through the government you taxation are through the government. And structure. Some other companies also have CSRO to, for the for the environment True. where they operate, True. so that they can have a good relationship with their with the yes. community. Yes. Then you now talk of profit. Yeah. Some profit is not all profit that the businessman take away from the business. You must plow back profit to the business. They True. call it retain earnings. That means you're also saving the interest of the business. Then before you now have dividend. Dividend is what the shareholders take home. So when you gather your profit <laughs> together, there's a percentage you then plow back you into plow the back. business. Because this is the engine that is making all the money. You must take care of the engine. So once, that is why in... And sometimes you put money into research and development, that is it. which is another sector, sector that you may be funding. And sometimes you also put money into the communal system. Maybe you have a stakeholder yeah. entrepreneurship thing. And sometimes you may just want to go and develop a particular physical infrastructural development mm -hmm. of the zone in which your factory is sited. Yeah. So, you've so you see, my at the eyes. end of the day, that is why what goes to the entrepreneur or the person I call the lovepreneur is what they call bottom line. Mm. He takes the one at the bottom. He would have satisfied all stakeholders before he takes the one at the bottom. So we don't satisfy or we don't support people who are trying to satisfy themselves first. Okay. They're always looking for the margin. Mm -hmm. What do I get? Mm -hmm. Whether uh, the customer is not happy, they are ready to serve products and services that doesn't meet the requirement of the customer, they don't care about their workers, they don't care about the environment, mm. they don't care about tasks, they don't care about their creditors. It's all about it's just how what's the margin. Need. Yes, it's me first. No, as a businessman, it's you last. So for Bank of Industry, it's not a linear calculative progression that you're interested in, but the ripple effect. Yes, yes. Uh, so if you're servicing or funding an enterprise, you're interested in the ripple effect of that enterprise to other stakeholders, other that, publics that is, of the organization. That is the concept. That's a, a fantastic clarification you just gave yeah. us. And I think a lot of our viewers out there perhaps are having their eyes open now, the inner eyes I mean now. Because the impression a lot of people have out there is, oh, Bank of Industries, it's difficult to access the facilities in, in the Bank of Industry. Um, maybe it's because people don't know that the categories that Bank of Industry places premium on, mm. uh, their own line of business or kind of business, or their own business philosophy or ethos 
may just not be in alignment you're, you're with very, what the Bank of Industry you're, sets you're, out you're very to, to, to achieve. Um, that is supposed to be the general orientation. General orientation. Yes, businesses are meant to serve the community. To serve the yes. community, and the society. If, if you are not pro-humans, if humanity is not your priority, you can't even be creative. Mm. So for a businessman, he must look at humanity in general. What is the contribution I want to make? That should be the foundation of what business do I want to do? First, what contribution do I want to make to the society? Then you now look at, it's not, there are so many issues in the society, you are not, you may not be wired to do everything. But look at the one that you feel their pulse, some, uh, the burden that you share, and say, okay, let me create a So that should be the that. starting point. That should be the starting point. Of entrepreneurial point. Yes. pursuit. It must be driven by passion because Fantastic. The, the road to success is leading with landmines. There True. are so many obstacles, there are so many challenges. If you don't have this driving in and driving uh, power, you will never be able to succeed. You will give in along the way. You will give in along so the way. So lots of impediments, hurdles, challenges, and even you are going to be exacted emotionally. Obviously. along the way Obviously. so but if you started out having a passion for a particular problem solving orientation mm. for adding value to society that will keep you going that is when it. difficult times come that because they it. must come in business mm. so we are looking for seriously with this breed of entrepreneurs that actually can solve the mirage of issues we have in our country because it will take people that are rooted and that are passionate in what they do for us to be able to solve all the issues from education to agriculture, uh, health care, housing. These are all areas the Bank of Industry mm. can play in. But we need passionate people that will be willing. Yeah. I, I normally tell people that your success in business is a function of the community, the size of community you are willing and able to serve. Willing and able, able to, to serve. serve. First, you are willing. That is the passion. Yeah. Then you now ask That's yourself, the passion and drive. Yes. You now ask yourself, able. Am I able? Do I capacity. have the capacity? So many people are willing about something. They are passionate, but they don't take they time to capacity. develop the capacity. Capacity mm. means organization. Because if you have a vision, you need an organization to deliver it. So Bank of Industry also pay premium attention to the organization you have set up. So I'm talking about management. So mm. it's not enough to say I have this product. We are looking at what is, who are the management team? Who do you have on so, board so to it, drive it? So it's not enough for your proposal mm. to evidence lovepreneurship. That is ability to infect positively the economy, the socioeconomic mm. life of the society, yeah. of the nation. Mm. That's your number one concern, that no doubt it. about that. that but it. you don't stop it there. No, yes. So the business idea may be brilliant, which is the second point. The business idea is what's the value you want to add? Ah, what's the problem the you want to solve? Yes. In what way do you want to help the society? The third point you now look at for is, do you have the drive and passion, which is the willingness? Yes. And then once you're able to establish that, that, the next one now is, do you have the capacity? capacity. And the first point you look at mm. in capacity mm. is, what's the organization yes. behind this yeah. idea? Yes, yes. Because that's the vehicle that will yeah. drive this idea. Is it. Because if you are said only, you will find that one man does not do something significant. You always Absolutely. need unity Absolutely. to create prosperity. You need unity, unity to, to, create, create to, to create prosperity. So the team behind the, the team, the team is not necessary. Like I was listening to you, Jack you, Ma. You, you are blowing my fuse. <laughs> you are blowing my fuse. We're going to take a short break now. Yeah. Honestly, you are blowing my fuse. We take a short break now, and when we come back, please just hang on in there because we're going to take it exactly from where we're taking this pause. Thank we'll you. be back in just a moment. Do stay with us. All right, so welcome back. And you're still on to talk with Femi Ipadiola. And we're still looking at attracting Bank of Industry investment into your business. And we'll be speaking with the state manager of uh, Bank of Industry, Mr. Pakuin. 
Erabo. And uh, just before we went on break, you made a profound statement that I want us to explore, that you need unity to make prosperity. Yeah. Please, let's, yeah. let's extrapolate on that statement. I, I said that nothing significant has ever been done by one man. Nothing significant, significant has ever been done by one man. So there's nothing like one man business. There is nothing. <laughs> yeah, you always need a team. Your ability to actually relate with human beings to deliver on your vision is what leadership is all about. Wow. Wow. So I, I mentioned a word, lovepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody have said that management is doing things rightly. Yeah. Leadership is doing the right thing. Lovepreneurship is doing the right thing rightly. Doing the right, right thing, thing rightly. rightly. So once you have been able to, you have a passion that have cultivated your heart, for you to get people on board, you need to step it up to a, the vision level. Mm. You communicate vision. It is not passion. You Coming up. So your vision should not be so myopic about you, I, myself, and I. It should be higher than you so that other people's interests can be satisfied in the pursuit of that vision. So You communicate vision because at the level of vision, you are able to, it becomes a shared aspiration. Mm. Others mm. can see themselves within that vision. Mm. So you are no longer saying this is what I want to do for myself. You are saying this is what I want to turn Nigeria into. This is what I want us to. Yes. By the time they see, they, oh, I would like to play in that Nigeria that this man is painting. Oh, I want to play in that business that is doing this kind of service to mm. humanity. So they, they form alignment. Alignment. So they can easily, yeah, alignment. they can easily align because you need people must align with your vision before they can work for you. But most most of the time, we don't see a lot of vision being casted for people. Absolutely. Leaders should be in the business of communication all the time because that is where you form alignment and harness the energy of others in order to deliver it. Because what they are delivering is what they want to be part of. Mm -hmm. They are not just working for you. They are not working to make your uh, uh, empire to be great. They know that in working for this organization, their own interest is embedded. embedded. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to create this unity, that is the process. You, tr you step up your, your passion to vision, cascade it to mission, it is mission that gives birth to vocation, and vocation is where people play. Because vocation is where people, you now begin to say, okay, I need an accountant, mm -hmm. I need a business development manager. You've I broken need, down yes, the mission. That. You break down mission into vocations, and that is where you start to employ people. And that's what organization is. That is organization. A group of people coming together yeah. to achieve a common goal through division of labor Beautiful. and hierarchy and status. I need to note that down. <laughs> and that is what we are talking about. So you see many people so hire people. When you say one man business, mm. it's really a mirage, it's an illusion. Yeah. And that's why maybe a lot of our people are toiling without getting results because they've it. not been able to see beyond that, my business, yes, yes. my company, my organization, mm. I, me. So you can still run it singularly if you don't have the funds yes, to yes. put a team together. You can still run it as a one man enterprise mm. but you must work in alignment and yes. consonance and integration with other yeah that, that is why they talk about you hear the word value chain value chain there are concepts. different yeah there are different players at different levels all of you working together for a, for a common uh, vision but vision. you have divided this uh, labor. The labor they are division of labor so everybody is handling on so it could either be an integrated company or it has been outsourced and everybody is saying, okay, you are handling production of cassava. I'm handling the processing. Somebody is handling distribution. Somebody is handling the... Um, Growth. Yes. Uh, you know, the farming of the cassava. That everybody is working together in synergy. And then somebody is handling the transportation, the haulage. Yeah. You know, and so somebody you, is building the machines. That the are beauty used. of that value chain is that that is the only way to actually cascade development. 
you but are getting is, a lot of people so absent on board. in our society. And um, you're just opening our eyes mm. to see a missing gap. You know, a lot of people are toiling every day, and that's why mm. entrepreneurship is so scary to a lot of people these days. But if only we could just recognize mm. that stakeholder concepts. Stakeholder concepts. There are a lot of stakeholders in every venture. For you example, must recognize them, identify them, identify their interests. Identify their interests. Yes. And how it contributes to the yes. overall, overall vision. Interest. So your vision should not be so myopic about you, I, myself, and I. It should be higher than you so that other people's interests can be satisfied in the pursuit of that vision. Wow. So when you are able to cast that kind of vision, you will always have support. Wow. So by it, the time it, you are it, sharing it, you say, how do we? They have already we? bought into your vision. How do we? Yes. Because so they could see them there. Relenting, hmm. Because yes. they are bought into it. Because their interest is there. They are pushing They are pushing. Oga, what about the, what we though. discussed that the, the other day? And Napoleon hmm. Hill said something similar to this hmm. in Think and Grow Rich, where he said, when people are convinced that they are working for a higher interest, hmm. they throw all of themselves that into it. That is it. That is it. And I'm, I'm getting that, that from you here that now. That is it. So if as a nation, Sorry, before you go into that, related to that also, mm. the illustration I can use is it's mm. only an African that I know who will set out to say, oh, I have a vision to manufacture an automobile. And then he goes to set up an automobile plant. He sets up a rubber plantation for the tire. <laughs> he sets up a tire manufacturing company. He a battery up... manufacturing company. Yes, I, I, I have a, a, an, uh, an experience. In okay. 2008, I was in Japan, and I was privileged to visit the uh, Toyota um, uh, Auto Village. That's the number one yes. car maker And I was surprised that they have over 500 MSMEs. Strong so, MSMEs. Yes, strong MSMEs supplying different components. As at then, they told us that a Toyota brand is made up of over 33,000 components put together. And these are manufactured by different smaller companies. With and, their own exclusive areas of yes. expertise. And the, the, the so shock... Toyota the, doesn't manufacture all of at the components. All. And the shocker we got is that they have this just-in-time <clears throat> management system that they don't keep over four hours of inventory. That means they don't have a large warehouse where they keep all this component. As, a, As they are picking, there is a system that have informed the MSME producing that part that that part need to be replaced. So they don't spend so much money keeping overhead. So they are actually working together as a whole, as a family. If they are doing research, there are new adv uh, advances in mm -hmm. technology. To ask. They are going to carry all these MSME along. So now we, we do his own research, yes. design the product he wants to release into the market, market. and then he calls all these stakeholders. All the stakeholders and begins to train them. Train them, yes. Uh, by way of specs, this yes. is the specs of. That's Rear it. view mirror, That's I want. Yeah, you, it. this is your own expertise. This is your own expertise. Well. I'm not going to manufacture And they might need to make investment to be able to manufacture this new design. But they would have looked at the market. With this new design, we are going to pump about 10 million cars. Hmm. So you will look at your, I am going to produce 10 million components. Exactly. If and I'm they are going to be spent. So it covers whatever investment that I'm going to further embark on. In order because to I already work. have off-takers. Yes, you have ready markets. And at any rate, if my company is manufacturing only side mirrors, mm. it's not only Toyota I'll be servicing, mm. if I'm very good. Yes. I might have two or three yes. automobile companies. That, yes, that you can also work for. So, if I, so at the end of the day, I'll mm. be manufacturing, if Toyota wants to release 10 million of this brand of car, Honda wants to release another 10 million, and maybe Volkswagen wants yeah. to release 20 million. I have and are, you million. know you have uh, also a huge spare parts market. Yeah. So I focus on what I do, do. best. The other Specialization. Man focuses, the entire manufacturing company focuses on its own. At the end of the day, one entity brings all of them together. together. And that rolls is, out that's why they to call the it Automobile assembly plant. They just assemble. Assemble. And as the money comes in, it splits everybody's yes. own into their different. Everybody is happy. So we are growing together. Concept. Yes. And this kind of thing, when you have a business proposal that has this kind of outlay or this kind of aspiration, mm. it's attractive to bank of industry. Obviously. 
Wow. Obviously. Wow. Wow. So if I just want to go to the UAE and bring in shoes to sell, or I just want to go to England, for instance, mm. and bring in UK phones to sell, <laughs> and I want you to fund that, it won't be as attractive to you. No, and it, it won't fly with us because we look at um, to support MSMEs that can produce import substitution goods. Import, import substitution. We are looking at what is, are we currently spending our hard earned foreign exchange on. And, and foreign if, reserve. Too. Yes, foreign reserve, depleting our foreign reserve. If any company can produce them in Nigeria using locally available raw material, that is our interest. So you must have local content is key to what we do. And if it also uh, creates jobs yeah. for the locals, yeah. wonderful. So it's going to galvanize the economy. That is it. And also help the nation also by way mm. of its clout on the international scene. Yes. So those are the kind of things that are attractive. That's it. I, I, want, to track, I want to backtrack a bit mm. because you said before you mentioned the unity is Creating how you create pro prosperity. prosperity. You talked about organization. You are interested mm. in the organization behind Yes, behind the, behind the venture, behind the behind vision. Behind the vision. Yes. How do you track that? Yeah, uh, it's very easy to track. Like I said, every vision needs an organization to for its implementation. Yeah. So organization is, uh, when we talk about organization, we are looking at how you are structured. Mm -hmm. How uh, the, your organogram? Yes, your assembly of your team that would deliver okay. on this vision. So, so first, the vocations that you have, how yeah, you have broken down the task. Yeah, how you have broken down. And who is manning what? Do, do they have the competence to do what you have assigned them to do? Do you have run pace in run hole? Yes. If you say this is your production manager, what is the coordinate experience that they have in the Maybe you are talking about uh, palm carne oil processing. Has this man ever worked in a PKO factory? So those are the things we are looking at. So, so we're so, looking so, at so, your... So you'll be looking at not only the organogram, yes. not only at the division of labor, labor. the task, the vocation, yes. but also the personnel behind each of those responsibilities yes. in and, terms of their antecedents. And we go deeper to look at your quality management system. In quality okay. management system, we are focusing on your processes and your procedure of doing things. If they are documented, mm -hmm. better for us. The checklist. And, yes, and that is one thing that most MSMEs so can. So if they are documented, you can trace the history. You can trace the okay. history. That is one thing that I want most MSMEs to pay attention to. You see, the problem with MSMEs is that because they are small, they always have this high turnover of uh, staff. staff. Some people come in in the next month, they have found a better opportunity, okay. they have left. Uh, they move on. So what you need to do is that because you have worked through all these processes yeah. when you were one man, now you want to expand. Mm -hmm. You have to document all the processes. This is the way we produce this product. Mm. This is the way we market. The procedure, Break it step down step. to a checklist. Step by step. step, by step. This is, so that when you bring in a new guy, he just reached through that step. He produced at the level of excellence that you want. And that you don't way, spend time and training that way and the training. Outcome is consistent. It's consistent. Mm. So you can be a caterer mm. and you are delivering, you are cooking for uh, a guest of 100. Uh, we are cooking for 100 guests mm. or 500 guests. You know the quantity of rice. You know the quantity of water. You know how long the water should boil before you pour in the rice. You know how many minutes should uh, uh, steam before you add your ingredients. So, 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 so all of these would have guaranteed guaranteed your seamless your, your, operation. Your, your products, regardless of whether yes. your factory has moved from a ten-man factory to. Mm a 1,000-man factory. Very once good. you have your checklist in place, once you have your procedural step-by-step -step clearly mm. spelled out, yeah. and you have your operation so manual. So you minimize errors, you minimize reject, that you, oh, you produce five items and customers are complaining, oh, this one did not actually meet our specifications. Mm -hmm. Because you have followed your checklist in producing that uh, particular product, yeah. 
errors are minimized. So this and gives you, quality is guaranteed. And that gives the BOI mm. an assurance yes. that this is an organization that is worth investing in. Investing in. Investing in. Because we are looking at Beautiful. how are you, have you been able to, are you resourceful? Mm. Have you been able to manage your own fund? Before you ask somebody else, I want to, to yes, I want you to invest in me. I want to see how you are managing your fund. So the other aspect after looking at the production is your accounting processes. Okay. Very important because at the end of the day, everything... After you have established the profile yeah. of the personnel on the team. On the team. You now go to the accounting The production, process. you have been able to break down, break them into processes and procedures, checklists. Now we are looking at the accounting, accounting. system. Okay. And by accounting system, we are simply saying that everything you do in business will end up in Naira and Kobo. True. True. You should account for each of them. <laughs> you are buying something, it should be documented. You are selling something, it should be documented. Right. Once it is that documented, it's very easy for us to know whether you are profitable or not. Because sometimes some people are in business, they are making money, yeah. but they are actually running at a loss. But they are because they are saying cash. What, what's coming what's what's going on is higher than what's yes, coming in. But because they are saying cash, they feel that oh I'm making money. When you document everything, you are it's easier for you to know whether you are making profit. And also to identify whether the organization is bleeding. Yeah. You may be making profit yes. but shortchanging yourself. That's it. So we call it management by measurement. So you must be so keeping BY is interested in that as well. Yes. The accounting history of the organization yes. and tracking the currency as it flows around the organization. Record keeping is so important. Because with the financials, I can tell you the head of any organization. So you ever wonder with why... With the financials? Yes. You can t t tell, tell me the health of an organization. organization. So you ever wonder... So you can use that as your sole diagnostic that is it. tool. That is the... You, so like if a medical doctor. When you hear people or they say banks is asking for their three years of detailed financials, uh -huh. It's because that is what we do. You want to check, you want yeah. to diagnose. With the financials, and we know the, the, the of character the of the management. I know how, wow. where you are uh, resourceful, how you are managing your inventory, how you are managing your credit. Wow. You may not know. You will just discover that some people are just selling goods to customers and mm. they are not taking money back. Yeah. So with your financials, I do simple ratios and I'm able to tell you that, look, your days payable is just too long for you to be able to survive. Yeah. So if your days payable is longer than your days receivable, days payable means that, okay, you have, in doing your business, you have suppliers mm -hmm. that can provide raw materials mm -hmm. and you will not pay them immediately. Mm -hmm. no then you also have customers you will sell your product to and you will not receive cash. Immediately. There is a thin line. You must ensure that the days that it take, takes you to collect your revenue from those customers. debtors, customers, is far shorter, far than, shorter. Yes, than the days it takes you to pay your suppliers. Right. Coming up. In, uh, startups should first understand the industry they play in. And the best way to understand the industry you're playing is to go into a value chain at the point where your cash conversion cycle is very short. So you may have days payable as 15 days. Let your days payable to be 30 days. For the suppliers. For the suppliers. Meaning that the suppliers are indirectly funding your business for 15 days. So you have a window. We have a window. So if you're actually a good business, you discover that it's not everything you borrow. If mm -hmm. you're able to create a track record, your suppliers know that you are consistent in payment, they will be willing to supply you goods on credit. They are happy because if they keep it in their store, it do them no good. It's no good at all. So, but if they know that you are able to turn it around. So they know in, in another two, three two weeks, weeks. This money comes money back. Is coming back. Ah, they will be willing to push it. Some of them, will, you will be the one to regulate. No, I can't take this so much. This is the market I can guarantee. So that will be another way of funding without <laughs> equity. Beautiful. We call it in uh, banking or in business, 
instantaneous financing. Instantaneous yes. financing. Yes, you don't need to borrow, you don't need to have uh, terms and interest rate, no. And you're not going to give them dividends? No dividend, no interest, <laughs> nothing. So you take your You're only materials. just creating market for them. Yes. Mm. You, so it's a win-win. It's though. a win-win, yeah. You're creating markets for them. Yes. They are also funding your business. They are funding your without business. Without giving you monetary value, but they're giving it. you value yes. that you will have expended, expended money Expended, yes. So mm. which means your cash flow indices. Mm. Uh, you're able to suppress cash within the organization. Yes, yes. When you don't have to pay for... Yeah, it's the same thing Supply I told you, days payable and days uh, receivable. Days payable Yes, days always uh, ensure that your payable is longer. You don't pay as fast as you receive. You know, uh, back in the 70s, I have this uncle, I mean, great-grand-uncle, because mm. at that time, the man was in his late 70s. Mm. I mean, so he's a great-grand-uncle of mine who had a very successful business. And uh, later on, his first son, who had resided in America for more than 10 years at that time, was asked to come back home to take over the business. And within a few years, the business wrecked. I found out later on that what made the business so wreck was that when his son came back, he found out that they had a lot of debts. Hmm. Of course, they were making money. Hmm. The company was healthy. Hmm. So what he did was just to say, no, 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 he doesn't like debt. He just paid off all the all debts. The debts. <laughs> and he didn't want to be owing, owing anybody. And that brought the wow. financial health of hmm. the company down. Hmm. So by the time real spending started coming, coming. in, because he didn't know. Yes. He didn't know what you talked about now, yes. about the accounting yes. history of the company. Hmm. He didn't know that there are seasons yes. when the company must really spend on certain mm. things. So by the time the spending season came, came, there was no cash to meet those spendings. Because he has... The, because the, he has expended it to the, service the, the, the suppliers, <laughs> to service the debtors, mm. who were not complaining, complaining. Anyway, because they knew there's a window <laughs> yeah, by of which course. the company will pay. There is always, we call it the cash conversion cycle. Cash there conversion is, there is, there cycle. Is a cycle. I release money today, it goes to, uh, into production, there is work in progress, there is finished goods, all these take number of mm -hmm. days. Then there is sales, uh, the receivable is created because customer will not pay. All these are taking days. Taking days. Then until they pay back. So until your money comes back, your cycle is not completed. It's not complete. So you see that it is not the day you spend money in buying raw material, that the money will come back. It takes a number of days <laughs> before it comes back. So that is why we always advise that when uh, startups should first understand the industry they play in, and the best way to understand the industry you play in is to go into a value chain at the point where your cash conversion cycle is very short. Okay. Go into a value chain at the stage where your cash conversion cycle will be very short. Where and you plug yourself in on yes, that chain. Yes. To be and one where the cash conversion cycle is, is very short. short. And in most cycles, mm -hmm. it is always at when you are a trader. Okay. Where you buy the finished product mm -hmm. and you sell to the consumer. Just put your margin on yes, it. Yes, just put your money. You buy today, you can sell today. Cash conversion can be one day mm -hmm. for you. But if you go and start at... All you need to do is just put a markup. A markup. And then... But so many people have never understood the business. They want to start at the... Let me use the word Austrian. Where the production starts. For an agro-processing uh, value chain, it is farming. Mm. Farming should not be the place because in farming, that is where you have the longest cash conversion cycle. You plant cassava today, you wait nine months. And in those nine months, no, you are still spending, you are spending money. Nourish, money is not coming back. It. Yes. So for a smart thinking entrepreneur, you don't start from farming. You start from processing. Where you buy the raw material, you process and you sell. And sell to the next stage. Yes. Your cycle is shorter. But if I come in as an aggregator, maybe I have smaller processors. I just come, I buy their product, but they don't have link to market. Yeah. For example, they are 
processors in the villages, in the hinterland. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big guy, or I just want to invest. Yeah. I just go and mop up all that they have produced, and I'm selling to Lagos, to Abuja, to Portacot. My cash conversion cycle is very it's short. So it is when you have oh, you done take that. You the eggs of the poultry farmers. Yeah. And, and then you distribute it to. Instead the of going to own a poultry, a poultry farm. Where you would have spent like 20 weeks raising your day old to a point of lay before they start laying and you are still spending money on feed. So that is not. That is the mismatch we have discovered. So cash conversion cycle. cycle. Very critical. In deciding cycle. where to start Plug a business, yourself on yes, a chain. on a chain, yes, very critical. I, 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 I used to know a guy who all he does is mm. it, it, it takes the chicken from the poultry Beautiful. owners mm. and supplies to the eateries. Fantastic business model. That's all he does. Fantastic he business. Own a so once he master that and he feels that okay, I need to uh, expand, he can do like backward integration okay. and say, okay, let me own my farm. So that I can supply part of the chicken. Now. It's not all. Part of. Just part of. So because he has gone backward, his margin will also increase. But, but the mistake people make is that, oh, I want my margin to be huge. That is why they are going too far Please. backward. And when you go too far backward, your yes, your margin, your margin is higher, mm -hmm. but, your, but risk your risk is, exposure is also high. And, and the late at oh which the money goodness. comes back, the rate is very slow. Because the cash conversion cycle is, is longer. Is longer. Yes. And you may not have the resources to a buffer. Yes. To accommodate. To accommodate. That to, to, yes. To, to, so for oh youths oh and novice, people that are just venturing into investment in the manufacturing processing, I always advise look for where the cash conversion cycle is shorter. That is in a buying and selling. You want to produce Gary, that is owning the factory. It may not be the best place to start. Have you even mastered the art of selling Gary? Mm. Because at the end of the day, whether you produce it or not, you will still have to sell it. To make money. Yes. Why yeah. not master the skills of selling? Selling. It is distribution. A, selling requires a lot of skills. True. It requires a lot of skill. You sure. can have the best product and it will be sitting right before you in your shelf, gathering dust. Absolutely. So, learning salesmanship. So, for my um, advice to youth is that learn salesmanship or apprenticeship. Salesmanship or apprenticeship. That is the best. Test your entrepreneurship skill from that point. Salesmanship. Or your ability to yes yeah, or apprenticeship you are studying somebody else mm -hmm. you are saving and that some, way you understand yes. the broad you understand yes on the in the industry that and is. then you understand also the various segments on the chain on the value chain very correct and yeah, that way you can now know yourself yes know your resources no, yes and then even identify. know all the margins and Lord know okay what margins. yes and also know what your master is not doing right so that when you start your own you know what to avoid. From where to, what to avoid yes. and where to launch from. Where to launch so your cash conversion cycle, cycle is key. You must take cognizance of it yes. in relation to the resources available, available to, you to you before you even begin to mm -hmm. deploy your resources. Very good. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, after the cash inventory or cash flow or the accounting, what else mm -hmm. do you look at? Um, I think in talking about the cash conversion cycle and where to plug in, I've uh, also uh, hinted on the need for you to guarantee your market. That is very key. Many people don't look at market. Who are my off takers? Who, will, who am I going to serve? That you should start your business from the...